what sparked you to open up this location? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> What's up everybody, Justin Conoco, and this is another episode of Prime People where we're connecting you with people in your community you may not know about, but we think you really need to know about. We're sitting down with Samara from Queen of the Nile at a recent studio that she just had outfitted and opened up. It's actually tonight that you're doing the grand opening party, We are right? doing the grand opening tonight between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. And you were wonderful to work with when we were going through the leasing process. I remember we had a bit of adventure on the first date when a police officer pulled up in the parking lot at the yes. back. It turned out being a longtime friend of mine who walked through and gave her some confidence on the building. And then the landlord was an interesting landlord to work with too from the standpoint that he's local, right? And Absolutely. as we're walking through seeing some of these upgrades and how it all came together, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Layout wise, um, we were talking about the space. Actually, you know what, we'll kick that back to after because I do want to touch on like what a massive difference there was and I keep looking off camera because Ellen's here as well too and she was part of the process and when we walked through this building initially it did not look like this but we'll get to that in a second. So Body Sugaring and Queen of the Nile, um, first off give me your origin story. How did Queen of the Nile come to be? Well, um, it my mother actually what used to sugar. Yeah. Um, this is it's been around for centuries. Okay. Sugaring's been around for centuries. All started in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and uh, my mother, being of Syrian descent, um, all she did was sugar. Mm -hmm. She used to make it and sugar. We we are four. She has four daughters. So, okay. And uh, and so she we never really shaved. Yeah. Right? So it was all and this sugar. is the actual sugar here. This right? is the sugar. Okay. Yeah. And now I make it. Okay, yeah. and it's it's like an alternative to waxing. I'm assuming along those lines. Yeah, or? so um, there's a there's quite a difference between sugaring and waxing. The only similarity is that it pulls it from the root. Okay, right, pulls the hair from the root. But there are quite a few differences. Sugar, obviously, it's all natural. It's just sugar, lemon, and water, mm -hmm. and wax is full of uh, chemicals and preservatives and resins, and it's it's applied on hot. Yeah. Um, Sounds so painful. Yeah, and, and it's ripped off yeah. against the hair growth, where sugar is applied with the hair growth okay. and pulled off against the growth. So, and I'm looking at the ingredients, and again, right, like I'm scratching my own itch here, that's why I like doing these, is that I'm totally, I don't know nothing about this, but I'm reading sugar, lemon juice, and water. You obviously have some proprietary blend that you use here. Mm -hmm. Those three items will literally make this the hair come off. Absolutely. Well, okay. you have to cook it, yeah. right, to the right temperature. Okay. You have to have the right ratio, and huh? Yeah. That's fascinating. Yes. Is it any less painful, or does that? It's look a like? little bit less painful okay. than waxing. Absolutely, yes. And people who have waxed mm -hmm. immediately see the difference. People who haven't, I mean, they haven't. They don't have anything to compare it with, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, obviously, when you're shaving, it doesn't hurt unless you nick yourself, right? But. Yeah, people who've waxed really, really see a difference. Huh. That's and you're saying, you know, it's they've been doing it for hundreds of years, but I, I haven't even heard of the term sugaring until fairly recently yeah. in North America and like you said, how long has it been in North America? Uh, I would say ten to fifteen years. It's, okay. yeah, it first started ten to fifteen years here. I remember because um, I was always doing it for myself and my family, my friends, because mm -hmm. I learned it from my mother. Um I never really thought of making it a business until I actually found a sugaring place here in London. Okay. And this was um, back in 2005. So you found another sugaring place in London. Yeah, one and sugaring place in London there was. Yeah. So you found that there was one there and you're like, huh, there's something there. Yeah, and something then you thought, there. we yeah. can probably do this better. Yeah. Yeah. And then you became yeah. your own business owner and kind of started the process too. Exactly. What, what did that look like from then until now? I mean, so Go I, ahead. yeah, um, it wasn't as popular then, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I didn't really give it my all. And um, however, Queen of the Nile was born in 2006. Okay. Way back then. Yeah. So um, I tried it from a wonderful friend of mine's hair salon mm -hmm. back then. Um, but again, I, I, ha I had other things on the go, yeah. so I didn't really give it my full and undivided attention until about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And then I said enough's enough and, and 
and this is becoming very, very popular. And I know that I have an edge to this. I know because I can make it myself because I've been doing it for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I thought, let's let's get this going. That is awesome. I like I like the entrepreneurial spirit. Actually, when I gave you those books, that's what I was thinking about, right? Because I met you both and like kind of real recognizes real in that sense that you can kind of see that fire is there and it's that's why we do these videos right is to translate that to the consumers yeah. a i didn't really know much about hair removal i thought waxing was the only option but it sounds yeah, you know. really painful now i know and i like the history of it as well too right the fact that it's been passed down from generation to generation and it is a family thing i think the markets are going back to that in a big way right we try to do what well, that and the aspect of how we do our business is a little bit more like one to one and hands on, mm -hmm. where you don't seem like you're just ordering some product, you know, oh. off offline to get and then use that product, and it's just it almost becomes like a factory, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And sugar is also um, biodegradable okay. and sustainable. It's um, it's all natural, right? So that's and um, that's I think where we're going in this world. Everything organic, everything you know. Natural. And yeah. from when we grew up and the yeah. pop tarts and everything else, right? It's just, yes. it's, it's amazing how exactly. it does make a difference, but I think people are, are waking up and it does matter. So what sparked you to open up this location? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> um, I had another location. Okay. I was just, uh, you know, somewhere else. And then I, um, I, I got too big. Yeah. Um, there it's was a good a problem lot to have. Demand. It yeah. was a good, definitely a good problem to have. Um, there was a lot of demand yeah. for it, and uh, you know I don't like to turn anybody away. And so I was working literally around the clock to try to keep everybody happy, and I just knew this is it. I needed a bigger place. And it's it's intimidating always looking at an expansion, right? And yeah. thinking you know, and the good business owners that I know, they always go through the numbers, they look through the different options, they don't just blindly sign a lease and think okay yeah this is going to work out and they double their size and then they don't actually have anything to fill that gap right it's exactly. I, it's funny I've, I've seen that twice in our business where we were like in a tiny office and then we grew to like a thousand square feet and we're like oh no like how, how are we going to make it work but if you're cautious now that gives me a lot of confidence for you as an operator because you care right the fact that you care from the things you can't see yeah. the build out and that whole process I can only imagine when you're actually doing your, your job, how much you care about doing that each very client, much, right? Very much so. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. And then where do you see the industry going? Do you have any insights for me as far as the sugar? You don't have to give away any secrets as far as what you're planning to do or how you're going to take over, but you know, do you see just a lot of consumer education over the next little bit? How do you see? Yeah, I do. And, uh, I mean, everybody who comes in gets a, a little bit of education yeah. on it and then passes it on to the next person and they come in and they love it. And, and I think it's just growth from here. Okay. Um, walk me through the build out because this building did not look like this when I came here the first time. Um, I'll, I'll be a little bit candid to the audience. I told you this the very first time I met you both. We were actually going to look at this for our office and we were going through a growth period. Um, and it was such a prime location with the parking spots in the back, right on Piccadilly, Black Walnut right on the corner, you were friends with the Taz girls as well too, yes. right? Like, I heard good things about you through them and other people that I know. And I thought to myself, I said, you know, I, I don't think this is the right location for us because I feel like it's a better long-standing location for somebody in your sphere, given it fits in perfectly with the area, it's the right thing for you guys, um, you know, that build out, like this used to be Deb Matthews office, the MPP office. So you probably all know that sign or when there was picketers, they'd be walking out front there. Yeah. I used to see them when I was at Pizza Pie. Um, I mean, it was so chopped up, right? The floor plan just was not ideal. Um, like, how did you envision it and then how did it turn out? Uh, well, see, we envisioned it um, not quite like this, but something like this. Mm -hmm. and, and we had the reception coming in from a different area. I'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see it after. But it was really Jose who came up with the final, the floor landlord plan. came up with the final floor plan. And, and we thought that's just perfect. It's he, perfect. He knows what he's doing. He's a, I told you that from the yeah. get-go, right? And I know I'm in sales. And if you don't know me, it's always kind of 
a soft touch where I don't want you to think I'm just selling you that, but um, I knew he's a contractor, he's a local guy, he cares about the building. He does. So it was a great partnership bringing you guys together. Yes. And the final product, like we went through, I think two revisions on the floor plans, what you guys came up with, I was even surprised. Like the lights are, the floors and just everything. Mm -hmm. I think you knocked it out of the park. Thank you. Um, we'll show some B-roll so you guys can see what that looks like as well too. I guess the last question I'm gonna ask is, Christmas and holidays are right around the corner. I'm assuming you guys do gift cards, right? We absolutely do. Okay, so if you guys need any gifts for your wife, which I'm sure you probably do, it's the 11th of December, get out there and come down and, and get a gift card from them. If they want to reach out to you, are you guys on any social channels? Is there a phone we're, number? We're on Instagram. Okay, what's the Instagram ha it handle? It is, um, Oh God. <laughs> we'll, we'll underlay it here. I'll get there from that from her after. I have a little form for you to fill out. Put me on the spot. I know. Ask me I'm difficult the, questions. I'm, I'm the worst for it. Just how old I am. <laughs> That's, I won't. Your phone number here, um, so people can reach you yes, guys. Yes, it's 519-317-7337. Um, the website, if you wanted to book online, is, five, is um, queenofthenile.ca. Okay, if you guys have any questions at all, I'll put all the resources in the links below. Appreciate your time, Samara, and you guys did a phenomenal job here. Thank you so much, yeah. Justin. My pleasure. What a wonderful business we have. I just had a blast interviewing one of our commercial clients who just opened up shop on Piccadilly, Queen of the Nile. Samara and Ellen were absolutely wonderful to work with. And you'll actually learn a whole bunch about an industry I knew nothing about. So as I said, you know, we do all types of transactions and from dealing with people finding their first home to people you know growing their businesses out and building communities real estate's probably one of the most exciting professions you can possibly be in if you ever want to get some insight into what that looks like feel free to hit me up